Today we're going to talk about a brand new line of batteries from Renji called their Core line, Core, C-O-R-E. This is a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that they sent to me. I've done a lot of reviews of different Renogy batteries on uh, on this channel and also on my unplugged channel for a uh, off-grid gear reviews and Some of the best batteries I have used have been the Renogy. I've used their 100 amp hour batteries and their 200 amp hour batteries This is like I said, this is a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and their core line Provides even greater stats than what you might used to be seeing in the line of batteries from both Renogy and a few of their competitors as well So let's take a look at this right now Okay, I got this printout right here, and I'll do an overlay of the screenshot of it over some of this video here. But when they sent me this printout, this battery was on sale for $7.99, and its counterpart, the older version, is $9.99. Now, $1,000 for a 200 amp hour battery is pretty good. That's pretty kind of standard, really. I think you can find some cheaper than that. You have to remember that the 200 amp hour Renogy battery that's $9.99 on a normal day has Bluetooth built into it. It has a couple other things like that. This one right here is $200 less and it's their new core line with even more features than that. So right now it's saying the rated capacity of this has a 6% positive tolerance offset, making it instead of cutting off at 200 amp hours, which is around 2,560 watts, 2,560 watt hours, I should say. This one actually cuts off around 2,713 watt hours, so 6% better tolerance. The dollar per watt hour with the sale on this one is about 35 cents per watt hour. That's pretty good because on the normal price, it's uh, 39 cents per watt hour on their older version. The dimensions of the battery are about the same. They say it's roughly about a 4D battery, 4D being the battery size. However, this one weighs about 13 pounds less than its predecessor. The original 200 amp hour Renogy with the built-in Bluetooth weighs about 60 pounds, and this one comes in just over 47 pounds. Now, that's kind of heavy for a lithium iron phosphate battery. You might be thinking, well, 47, 50 pounds, even 60 pounds, that's heavy for a lithium iron phosphate battery, and, and it is. I've noticed that these lithium iron phosphate batteries that are really lightweight, the smaller ones, when you get up to 100 amp hours or larger, the weight seems to increase a little bit. Now, I want you to take that and compare it with a 200 amp hour battery that's lead acid or AGM. So while 60 pounds, 40, 47 pounds for this new core product sounds a little heavy, I bet it would be at least twice that for an AGM battery and maybe between two and three times that for a lead acid battery if you could actually find one that big. In fact, I have a lead acid battery in there that's a repeater battery. It came out of a repeater shack. It's one of those tall skinny ones. I think it's 190 amp hours and it probably weighs 150 pounds. It's freaking heavy. So yeah, 47 pounds for 200 amp hour battery is actually not very bad at all. They're both rated at 12.8 volts, which is your four cells at 3.2 volts each, okay? 200 amp hours, 212.8 volts. This one, they're claiming a 5,000 recharge uh, cycle capacity over five years of warranty. Now, that, that doesn't mean that after five years, the 5,000 recharge cycles capacity is going to be null and void. It just means that this battery has a five-year warranty where the pre predecessor has a three-year warranty from 0% to 80%, 5,000 times. The predecessor only claims 2,000, which I find a little low for LiPo 4 batteries. Most of your LiPo 4 batteries, especially your BioInno batteries, are three to 4,000 charge cycles, something like that. A couple of the cheaper no-name brands I've, I've, I've seen claim about 2,000, but Renogy makes a pretty good battery. So I find 2,000 on their predecessor to, the, uh, to this model being a little bit low, but this one claims 5,000, so it's all good there. And it's cheaper, so what are you complaining about? Like I said, this one has a five-year warranty where the other one has a three-year warranty. This one and the, both versions, the old one and new one, are IP65 rated. This one right here has a flame retardancy of UL94V-0. I don't know what that means. I've never researched uh, fireproof or flameproof batteries or stuff like that. So at least it has something in the flame retardancy capacity. I don't know, I've never seen a battery with that. This one and the old one both have a 200 amp BMS, a battery management system. So in other words, you're going to get the full capacity of the battery on that's controlled by the BMS. The BMS battery management system basically keeps the battery from charging from the voltage dropping too low if you're using it and it keeps it from uh, damaging the cells in the battery. This one also has a low 
temperature cutoff sensor. So if you're operating the battery in a cold environment, somewhere up north, even somewhere in like the Arctic, and it's too cold to charge the battery, even though you've got like maybe an AC charger plugged into it or a solar panel plugged into it with a charge controller, hopefully, once it gets down to a certain temperature, and I'm not sure what that temperature is here. It doesn't tell me on this paperwork. Once it gets down below a certain temperature, the BMS is gonna cut off charging in order to keep from damaging the cells in a low temperature environment. Not every battery has that. And if you watch Will Prouse his channel he really harps on that he's he thinks that's really really important i asked kevin from bioeno one time if that was very important he didn't seem to think it was all that big of a deal so i think that there's a mixed opinion out there in the community about whether that's a big deal or not but down here in texas i don't have that problem it doesn't get that cold down here i mean look we don't get into subarctic temperatures down here but if you guys up north, Wisconsin, New York, New Jersey, upstate, you guys in Canada, especially you guys in the northern Canada, ugh, it's better to have this than not have it, I would think, even if it doesn't really matter that much, which I'm kind of leaning on the side of it can't hurt. You know, if, if it's really cold, then I can see how something might be damaged if it's trying to charge because that charge usually heats up the cells. So I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about that. I don't know what the answer is, but this one does have low temperature cutoff for the BMS. About the only flaw I can find with this new model is that it does not have Bluetooth. It, uh, you can connect it in series and parallel. The, uh, the BMS will allow you to connect it in, uh, in parallel. Some of the smaller, cheaper batteries, uh, they tell you not to connect them in parallel if you want to turn a 20 amp hour battery into a 40 amp hour battery by connecting two of them together. They tell you not to do that because of the cheap cells that's in them. This one, you can do that. This has obviously got much better cells in it, but it doesn't have Bluetooth. So you can't connect this battery directly to the Renji DC Home app that they have for so many of their items. Now, they do make a Bluetooth connector that you you can literally connect anything. You can take one of the Renogy Bluetooth connectors that's positive and negative and you connect it directly to the battery and it'll connect to really any battery. It doesn't even have to be a Renogy battery. So if you want to monitor a, a multi-battery system with different brands or you want to monitor a battery that doesn't have Bluetooth, you can always add that and still monitor everything from your DC Home app that Renogy supplies for all of their products. So check the link in the description below. Let me know if you have any comments or questions about this specific battery. Um, I'm looking forward to using this. I think I'm going to set this up on the RV. My hope is to get a very robust battery system set up on the RV that I can use to remotely monitor through my Starlink internet connection and that I can remotely control with some sort of uh, remote control generator starter and charge up when I'm not sitting in front of the RV. So more to come on that. I got a couple of videos around that subject on my Unplugged channel. I'll link that up in the cards of the YouTube video. So let me know what you think about that as well. Thanks.